The metaphor that I like to use when we think about moving from conventional approaches to the next generation of foodborne outbreak response is the Hubble telescope. Can you imagine how people felt when they went from just a simple backyard light telescope to flicking on the Hubble for the first time and were able to see deep into the stars? Using whole genome sequencing, which drives the genome tracker network, we can now look deep into foodborne outbreaks and track them back to their source exactly. When you go out to eat, if you're going to a restaurant, say a salad bar, you can think how many different ingredients are you actually eating? And for each different kind of food, they come from a different part of the world, and so they have different pathogens that are associated with that particular kind of food. And so when you eat at a salad bar, you might easily eat 50 or 100 different ingredients, which means you're really exposing yourself to the potential risk of a global pathogen exposure. So what we've been doing for Genome Tracker is we're sequencing pathogens from known foods and from known environments. And we're building up a database of the genomes of the pathogens from these particular places. And then when you get sick, and it's uncertain what you got sick from, we compare the pathogen from you to the database, and then we can say, hey, this looks like a pathogen we've seen before in California spinach or Chinese shrimp. And so this is a kind of microbial investigative lead. One of the most powerful examples that we've recently uncovered in the use of whole genome sequencing in our genome tracker network actually happened this past summer. We noticed that there were illnesses associated with peanut butter or nut butter. And they were in different states in different parts of the country, and it was not clear that they were related. At the same time, FDA field inspectors had done a random survey of a plant that made nut butter and found salmonella in the facility. When we sequenced those salmonella and put them in the database, they were almost perfect matches across 4.6 million data points to the two illnesses in different parts of the country. So we had actually used it in this case to detect the source of an outbreak just as the outbreak was starting. We were able to stop the food product from going further into the consumer's food supply and we were able to stop the outbreak before it advanced to many dozens or hundreds of illnesses. And that was a very powerful application for Genome Tracker. At the end of 2014, we'll have sequenced 10,000 new bacterial genomes and made them all publicly available. This is equivalent to a hundred million file cabinets stuffed full of documents that are available to the public. And this is growing. We're going to double again in this year, the next year, and double again. And this is becoming a global phenomena where laboratories, hospitals, academics, and public health laboratories are going to be all collecting and making this data publicly available. Whole genome sequencing is also telling us things that we never thought we could learn about bacterial pathogens. We've learned things that we never thought possible. Things like certain salmonella are now resistant to heavy metals and they live in tuna and other top predators in the sea where heavy metals accumulate. These are adaptations or changes in the germ that we never knew existed. And by learning, how the germ itself is evolving and changing, we'll be able to come up with better preventive controls for the food supply and for food manufacturers to stop the contamination in their plants, in their facilities, before it spreads.